Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of Jonathan Levine's movies. Yes, the movie Longshot just came out. I love that movie, and it was directed by Jonathan Levine, so I thought to celebrate that movie, I'd rank all of Jonathan Levine's movies. He's a pretty good uh, director. I think he's kind of underrated in some aspects and stuff, but I think a lot of people, the majority of people, really enjoy a lot of his films, and I'm glad a lot of people like them, and I'm glad he's branching out, doing different kind of genre works and stuff. You know, it's mostly great when it comes to comedy, but yeah, we'll get to that. He has directed seven films, so I thought I'd just rank all seven of his films that he's directed, from my in my opinion, from at least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get to it. Coming in at number seven is Snatched. This is garbage. I hated this movie. Uh, Goldie Hawn and Amy Schumer. This just goes to show you that Amy Schumer was a one-trick pony. She did Trainwreck, which was a pretty funny film. Never did a good movie after that. I, I, I can't stand her. I think she's a terrible stand-up comedian and a pretty bad actress. And she is awful in this movie with Goldie Hawn, who is also not that great of an actress. Love Kurt Russell, but still. Uh, they have no chemistry with each other. It's just this mother, daughter, going on this, like, vacation with each other. Oh, overbearing mother, crude comedy. That's not funny. And just the scenarios make no sense. The characters make no sense. This movie itself doesn't make sense. So, yeah, it's terrible. Coming in number six is All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Yes, he tried to do a horror film. I'm glad he didn't try again, because this is a really bad film. Yes, Amber Heard cannot make a film. Not a lot of these teenagers can make a film. And this movie is just not scary, and it just, it, it, it's just, it's grotesque. It's uh, overly sexual, and it's just, it's a little disturbing, and not in a good way. It's just creepy and weird. But not in a good way. That a horror movie should. A horror movie should be creepy and weird. I was only creeped out and weirded out by some of these people and these characters. And some of the characters we, we should be rooting for. I'm like, okay, they're weird. I don't want to root for them. I don't want to root, root for anyone. Oh, everyone just dies so the movie will fucking end. But, yeah, this is not a good movie. It's just got irritating characters, sloppy direction, pretty bad writing. But, you know, um, I felt like uh, Jonathan Levine was still trying to get his footing and stuff. But at least his other films are great. But these two other, these two films, ugh, not good. Coming in number five is The Wackness. The Wackness was his first film, and surprisingly enough, it was pretty darn great, actually. For a first film, pretty impressive. Uh, Josh Peck is actually pretty good in this movie, and I don't like Josh Peck, but he's good in this movie. So has Ben Kingsley and stuff, and it's a lot about the urban hip-hop world and stuff, and it's a really interesting coming-of-age story. And nothing about this movie should work, but it does work. It's weird, it's off kilter at times, but it just, it works. It's got strange characters, weird cinematography, it's got that very low-budget feel. It kind of feels like a student thesis film, but honestly, I, that's, that's what kind of gives it its style and its uniqueness, and... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the music, I enjoyed the characters. It's kind of like a one-time watch. I probably will never see it again, but for a, for a directorial debut, it's pretty darn great. Coming in number four is The Night Before. <laughs> number four. Night Before. Uh, I love this movie, actually. This is a great Christmas movie. I love Seth Rogen, Je Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Anthony Mackie. All three of them have great chemistry. I love uh, Michael Shannon as Mr. Green, as the drug dealer. It's very funny. Uh... I love everyone in this movie. The cameos of James Franco, Miley Cyrus are very funny. It just, ugh. just three guys the night before Christmas hanging out one last time together, having a cool old time and stuff. And it's just a very funny movie. It's a funny, raunchy, stoner Christmas comedy that I just love. Coming to number three is Warm Bodies. Yes, this is a great film. This, just like uh, The Wackness, this should not work. It should not. It is a zombie romance movie where a girl falls in love with a zombie. That sounds so stupid. I even saw the trailer when this came out in 2013, and I'm like, that sounds ridiculous. But I dug it. I thought it was good. Was it 2013? Uh, 2013 or 2014, whatever. I really enjoyed this film, actually. I thought it was sweet, it was touching, it was funny. I loved Nicholas Holt and Teresa Palmer's chemistry. I love the soundtrack. I love John Malkovich as this very over-the-top villain. Well, sort of villain. And yeah, I, I just thought it really worked. And yeah, I think it's good. Conan number two is Longshot. Yeah, I just did a review of this, so I don't need to talk too much about it, but it's a really good, interesting political thriller. Seth Rogen's in it. I feel like if he just puts Seth Rogen in his movies, he's just gonna get a great film. Seth Rogen, Charlize Theron are both great. They both have great chemistry. 
Uh, some of the jokes in the beginning don't always, like, land, but it gets funnier and funnier as the film keeps going. I love O'Shea Jackson Jr. I love the whole supporting cast and just has a really good political intrigue, but also has great romance, great comedy. It's just, it's just a fun old time. It's probably my favorite romantic comedy of this year, and it probably won't be beat when it comes to rom-coms of 2019. And my number one favorite Jonathan Levine movie is 50-50. 50-50 is his best film. This is so good. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Seth Rogen, amazing in this film, amazing chemistry. It is a straight drama comedy about a guy diagnosed with uh, a tumor in his spine, which is cancerous, and basically has to do chemotherapy, and he has the help of his mother, played by Angelica Houston, and his best buddy, Seth Rogen, trying to basically guide him and just cheer him up while he's doing chemotherapy. Anna Kendrick is in it as the therapist, Bryce Dallas Howard as the ex-girlfriend, just just a great cast with great comedy, great drama. It's funny, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll just be so invested with this story, and I love this film. I absolutely love it, have no issues with it, it's easily Jonathan Levine's best film. So yeah, that was my ranking of Jonathan Levine's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, do you agree with this ranking? If not, give me guys a ranking of all Jonathan Levine's movies and your guys' opinion. From your least favorite to your favorite, comment below, let me know. And as well as the next video, please like subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.